Hi kids. Hey guys, what's happening? It's so good to see you here for the lesson of the week. As you guys know, we've been in a really big conversation about who God is and what he is like. Mm. And the reason it's such a big conversation is because we love and serve a really big God. And there are actually lots of ways that we describe him and can get to know him. Why don't we review some of the ones that we've learned so far? Mm. So we have learned that God is a protector. He is powerful. He's compassionate. Mm -hmm. He is unchanging, which means he has never changed and never will. We learned that he is infinite or without limits. We learned that he's the creator. And last week, we learned that God is eternal, which just means that he has no beginning and no end, that he is forever. That's good. So why don't we dive into this week's lesson? And I have a question for you. If you could have any pet in the entire world, what pet would you choose? No limits. No limits. I recently met somebody who owns a spider monkey. So <laughs> the sky is the limit here. What pet would you choose? Oh, I'll give you a second to think right. about it. You guys got one? I'm going with a walrus. Oh, that seems walrus. that seems pretty awesome. Oh man, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a really good one. You guys have oh, your pet in oh. mind? Okay, so I want you to imagine that you actually own that pet that you will choose. Mm. What kinds of things would your pet need? Well, we know that no matter what animal it is, it would need food. And if it's a walrus, it would need a lot so of much food, food, I'm guessing. I need to give lots of food. Yeah. Yep. Um, no matter what animal it is, I think it would need clean water. Mm -hmm. um, what else? It would need some kind of environment or habitat or a space to live in for it to mm. thrive. Yep. Right? And what do you guys think would happen if you didn't provide these things for your pet? So let's say you didn't give it food, you didn't give it water, you didn't give it a nice home. It wouldn't be good. No, sadly, your pet would not survive. It wouldn't be able to live, right? That's right. Because that pet would be um, depending on you in order to live. It would need you to take care of it. And just like a pet would need you or maybe some of you have pets at home, so you know this. Pets need us to live. Mm -hmm. We need God to live. So we are dependent on God. That's right. Yeah, so God is different than we are. Mm -hmm. And the characteristic that we're going to talk about this week is how God is self-sufficient. So self-sufficient might sound a little weird to you guys. That just means that God doesn't need anything. That means that he takes care of himself, doesn't need anything from us. Or anybody else, he is self-sufficient. So if you think about the pet picture that Krista was talking about, that pet needs all sorts of help. Mm -hmm. But we also need all sorts of help. Mm -hmm. And only God can give that to us. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the sad thing is, is that we often try to be self-sufficient too. So we try to live like God. And we try to do things all on our own. And sometimes we think that we actually don't need God's help. Mm. But that's actually not the truth. That's right. So let's think of an example together. So if you think you can take care of yourself, maybe you think I'm going to walk myself to the grocery store and I'll get my food that I need for the day and then I'll come home and I'll eat it and I'll be just taking care of myself today. Well, that's true. You can do those things. However, if you think about it, on that walk, you need to be able to breathe. So if you take a breath, well, where did that come from? I didn't provide that. God provided that for us. Or how about the way that we got there? We're really creatively made so that we can move around and we can even mm -hmm. get ourselves to the store. So we're really well made, and God did that for us. Mm -hmm. Or when we get to the grocery store, there's all sorts of food, but... Who took care of getting all the plants and the animals together? Well, people did that, but how did that stuff get there? God made all that stuff happen. Mm -hmm. Or maybe when you're walking back home from the store, it feels warm outside, you feel cozy on that walk. Well, who put the sun in the sky to keep you warm? Mm -hmm. That was God. So sometimes we get to thinking that we're self-sufficient because we can do stuff on our own. Mm -hmm. But if you step back and think about it, we need a lot more than I think we give God credit for. Mm, yeah, I think that's true. 
And it's actually not anything new. Mm. So we can look at the Bible. There's many, many stories of people all throughout Scripture who have been trying to be self-sufficient, who've been trying to live without the help of God or just thinking that they didn't need God's help. Mm. We're actually going to watch a short video clip that's going to show us one of those stories. This comes right after Moses had, with God's power, split the Red Sea and the Israelites walked through Mm. and they instantly entered into the wilderness. So let's watch this clip together. Check it out. God's story, wilderness. So part of God's story is about how God took care of his family in the wilderness. And it begins like this. For many years, God's family was stuck as slaves in Egypt. So God chose a guy named Moses to lead them out of slavery and into an amazing home called Canaan, or the promised land, where they could be free. From the moment the Israelites left Egypt, God made it clear that he was with his family. He led them with a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. He actually split the Red Sea in two parts so they could walk to safety. But the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land was hard. In fact, the Israelites didn't know where to find food and water or when they would get to Canaan. So just three days after leaving Egypt, they started complaining. What are we going to drink? Now Moses knew that God hadn't freed them from Egypt and parted the Red Sea just to let them die of thirst in the desert. So he asked the Lord to help and God helped. Then about a month later, they complained again. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us to death. They actually wished they could be slaves again. Kids, have you ever complained about something instead of trusting God for help? Well, guess what? God had a plan his family never could have imagined. In the morning, dew covered the ground, and when it was gone, there were flakes of food that looked like frost. The Israelites called it manna, which means, what is it? Moses told them to eat it all and not to save any. But of course, some people saved a little, just to be safe. Remember, they were worried they wouldn't have what they needed. The next morning, the old manna was full of maggots, which are little bugs, yuck! But the good news is, there was also new manna. See, God wanted them to trust him every single day. What's really crazy though, is on the sixth day of every week, God did tell them to gather enough for two days. That way, they had one day to rest. It's called a Sabbath, and it's a day of rest. So when they woke up on the seventh day of the week, the manna they had saved was as fresh as it was when it first fell. We don't know how that happened, but it did. Well, the Israelites kept traveling, following the cloud and fire, eating new manna every day, and getting a Sabbath every week. It might seem pretty clear that God was with them, but they weren't so sure. At one point, they even said to Moses, Is the Lord with us or not? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us with thirst? The people had stopped trusting Moses, which really meant they had stopped trusting God just because things got hard. Moses knew God had a plan though, and he asked for help. Turns out, God had another miracle in store. God said, take your staff, strike the rock, and water will come gushing out. And it did. For about 40 more years, God's family wandered the desert. And all that time, God kept on giving them food, water, rest, and protection. He even kept their clothes from wearing out. God's family couldn't take care of themselves on their own. They had to trust God, but he always gave them just enough just in time, and often in ways they could have never expected. And that's the story of how God took care of his family in the wilderness. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God wanted his family to be free. God led them with a cloud and fire. He parted the Red Sea. The Israelites got thirsty and complained. God gave them water. They got hungry and complained again. God gave them food. They got 
thirsty and complained again. God gave them water, again. For 40 years, God gave them what they needed. All they had to do was trust every day. And that's a part of God's story. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video. As we saw, the Israelites had to learn to depend on God. There were many times throughout that story where they wanted to be self-sufficient and they thought they knew best. But when they were without food and without water, they learned that God had good plans for them and he was always there to take care of them mm -hmm. and provide for them. Right. And just like them, you and I are dependent on God. We need God. So God gives us every breath that we take and he's with us every step that we take. Mm -hmm. We can depend on God to care for us and to lead us where he wants us to go. Yeah, so one of the ways that we can practice depending on God or trusting and relying on him is by looking to his word in the Bible. And there's this really cool verse in Philippians chapter 4 that says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And I think that if we take that and we think about it for just a second, that can really give us a lot. So maybe you have been having a hard time with the dark or you have bad dreams or have a hard time falling asleep. Maybe you're nervous about um, a game coming up um, or what summer is going to be like, um, vacations. Uh, what else? Maybe something with friends. Maybe you're not sure if something's going on with a friend that you have and it's not working out really well. Maybe there's things that are just really hard for you right now. This verse is perfect because you can depend on him to give you strength. He can provide for you. He can give you what you need. Mm -hmm. That's true. So as you go about your week, try to remember that you get to depend on God, mm. that God is self-sufficient, which just means that he doesn't need anything, but he has everything that you need. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Have a great week. Bye, everybody. Bye.